Hello, my name is Jason Stone and we're going to continue our discussions about interpersonal communication. Today we're talking about language and specifically we're looking at connotative and denotative meaning and uh, we're talking a little bit about semantics. Uh, we'll begin that discussion by looking at Ogden and Richard's semantic triangle. And Ogden and Richard's semantic triangle is a useful uh, tool, it's a useful discussion aid uh, for conceptualizing exactly how uh, the semantic triangle uh, works and how linguistics works uh, in our everyday life. So uh, let's look at yet another triangle-based uh, interpersonal communication model. So uh, the triangle, of course, has three vertices, and in those three vertices, uh, we have a, a couple of terms. Uh, the first term is symbol, and uh, that is, in English, uh, just a word. Uh, so in English, obviously, we use 26 characters, 26 letters, uh, in various different combinations to create words. Uh, those words uh, are how we express ourselves uh, using language. Uh, for the most part, other languages, uh, languages that maybe aren't necessarily based on an alphabet, uh, use um, kind of uh, pictures. They use uh, things that you know maybe stand in uh, for those other things. Acronyms are another really great example of uh, a symbol. Uh, FBI uh, typically means uh, Federal uh, Bureau of Investigation. Uh, that's an example of an acronym. Uh, we have a couple of uh, the first letters of three different words that are kind of put together uh, to shorten it. And uh, that, of course, is a symbol. Uh, with every symbol, though, there's a couple of other things that are interacting in these different vertices. And let's go ahead and talk about those. Uh, first is the thought of the reference. So that is literally the thing that happens between your ears, the thing that comes to your mind whenever you hear uh, the, the word dog. So uh, when you hear that word dog, you might be thinking a little bit about uh, maybe a dog that you grew up with, maybe the current dog uh, that you have now, or you may even think of, you know, a more uh, stereotypical or prototypical, you know, dog. You may think of, uh, you know, uh, Lassie. You may think of, uh, you know, uh, a dog, uh, you know, the Taco Bell Chihuahua. Uh, there's any number of different, you know, thought or references uh, that you could have that would be individual to you, you know, based on uh, that particular dog. So we all have uh, our own individual meaning uh, whenever we see a phrase, in particular whenever we see a phrase like dog uh, used. And then we have a, a thought or a referent, and that is uh, kind of more globally uh, what everybody thinks of uh, whenever uh, they hear the word dog and it's not being used in a specific context. So uh, if you say something to the effect of um, yeah, there's a stray dog uh, down the street. Um, you know, people may then ask a follow-up question. Well, what kind of dog was it? Did it have, you know, a collar? Did it look like it had tags? Did it look like it had been, you know, a stray dog for a really long time? Um, you know, that's going to prompt a number of different questions because um, while we understand, you know, that they're talking in general about a, a four-legged uh, mammal that is colloquially referred to or commonly referred to as, you know, quote, man's best friend. Um, we, we also know, you know, very much that there's a lot of variety uh, inherent uh, within dogs. So, uh, for instance, uh, the thought or reference might be, you know, a, a really fluffy, cute, you know, puppy, or it may be, you know, an aggressive kind of guard dog, uh, you know, uh, a dog that, you know, is certainly intimidating if you were looking to, you know, take something. Uh, from someone, um, you know, you might think twice uh, if you were, you know, confronted by that that Doberman. Uh, you might have a, you know, a second thought uh, about, you know, attempting to to take some property uh, from the person who owns uh, that that Doberman. So um, we all have a thought or a reference, and whether or not you think of an aggressive guard dog or a puppy, uh, you're still kind of in the same ballpark. You're talking about a dog, and uh, the big referent that all of us uh, are alluding to or thinking about is of course the Webster's Dictionary definition of dog and that is a member of the canine uh, familiaris species bred in many varieties any carnivore of the dog family having prominent canine teeth and in a wild state a long slender muzzle or deep chested muscular body and a bushy tail large erect ears and so obviously if you look at like you know all of the specific things that are talking about canine teeth long uh, slender muzzle deep muscular chested body that's a lot less uh, this puppy and a lot more the doberman so actually the doberman is probably more uh, consistent with like the referent that everybody is thinking of as opposed to you're thinking of a cute you know cuddly puppy that's probably your individual thought or reference 
So uh, that individual thought or reference, that's the connotative meaning. And connotative meaning is really simple to remember. It's essentially the meaning that happens between your ears. It's what that connotes. Uh, and if you think about, you know, other words, uh, you know, I think that, you know, connotative, uh, you know, it, what is it connected with? You know, those are other, you know, kind of words that are sort of similar uh, you know, in, in, in the English language, and they have kind of a similar meaning. It's, it's essentially your connected meaning. What do you connote, you know, with that? And, uh, you know, kind of what, is, what does your cognition look like, you know, whenever you, you have that, that connotative meaning when you're exploring that? Uh, dictionary uh, meaning is commonly referred to as denotative meaning. And uh, that's essentially just, you know, kind of what everyone thinks the word means and what is a, a good dictionary definition of that particular concept or that particular construct. So uh, I like to tell stories. And uh, one of the stories that I, I tell in this class is about language. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, I was not uh, real fond of dogs. Uh, growing up, um, there was a dog in my life, and uh, you, you see the dog um, there on the screen. It was a, a really aggressive Doberman uh, that my Aunt Sherry uh, owned, and uh, turns out the dog, you know, was super aggressive. He used to get into fights with other dogs. It was, you know, very protective of her. Uh, you know, as a single woman who, you know, ran to a lot of rodeos and did a bunch of stuff like that, I'm glad that that dog was so protective uh, of my aunt. However, um, the dog really scared me a lot. It terrified me uh, when I was a young, you know, little, little tyke, uh, you know, four, four and a half, five years old. And uh, I remember one afternoon, you know, Sniper was kind of growling at me and I thought that maybe he meant to do me some harm. So uh, I crawled up uh, in my grandma's tree and uh, there's a picture of me climbing the tree. And that's not actually when I climbed it uh, to get away from Sniper, but Sniper definitely treed me up in that tree for about 30 minutes. And I stayed there uh, until they called me for dinner and uh, until they put <laughs> Sniper up and put him back in the house. And then I, I came down, you know, out of the tree. So uh, my connotative meaning uh, with regard to dog uh, was kind of off for a little while. And uh, I wasn't a huge fan of dogs. I didn't really like dogs until I got uh, much older. So um, regardless of what the word is, we all have a semantic kind of meaning that is conjured up in our head whenever we think about that construct or about that word. So we have a symbolic uh, kind of representation, and that's the actual letters that we put together, D-O-G, to construct the word dog. That, of course, has a linguistic meaning. That linguistic meaning or that semantic meaning is something that we arrive at through our own individual thought or references, which are essentially connotative uh, meanings. We explore that connotative meaning, and uh, that allows us to arrive uh, at, a, at a broader kind of meaning that we share with other individuals, and that's that referent meaning. So uh, all of this is kind of circular. It can go in really any order. It doesn't have to necessarily start from the symbol and go to the connotative meaning or uh, the referent. More likely than not, it actually works the other way around. We start from that symbol that uh, leads us to the big picture kind of everyday agreed upon term, and then we see you know some more specifics. So uh, think back to that sentence. There's a stray dog down the street. Well, what kind of dog is it? Is it, uh, you know, a, is, it, is it a dog that um, <clears throat> is been stray for a long time? Uh, is it mangy? Does it have tags on it? Does it belong to somebody? You know, there's likely going to be a whole lot more follow-up questions that are brought up by your thoughts and your references after you hear, uh, the, after you understand that there's a symbol being used and then you associate that with a referent, you're going to then have a lot of connotative meaning or thoughts and references about that particular symbol. And uh, the cool thing about the semantic triangle is that this works for essentially any construct or any language, uh, any word, you know, that you might, you know, want to put it through. And, uh, you know, everything essentially has a connotative meaning, something that's special to you, and then a referent meaning. And uh, sometimes we develop... Um, specific thoughts or references that we share with other individuals and then we create a speech community based on uh, the the co-sharing of that meaning um, so you know for instance uh, in our class uh, we've had several you know specific you know kind of things that we've talked about and those specific things are things that only the people who have been in class on that particular day know so we've kind of created a speech community uh, for ourselves based around some of that individual meaning that we've created and that we've shared over the course of, of being in, enrolled uh, in, in this class uh, with one another this semester. So I encourage you to check out the remainder of the content uh, in this module. 
and uh, for you to continue to explore Ogden and Richard's semantic triangle and for you to potentially put some other uh, thoughts and some other phrases, some other symbols uh, through the semantic triangle and see if you're able to uh, create even more meaning for yourself. Take care of yourself. Have a great day.